Hi everyone, welcome back. I know that I haven't been posting as consistently and I apologize for that. I'm going to be making it a point once again to come on every week and I'm sorry that it's been a while and now I'm trying to catch up with everything and I have stage five for you, which is reattraction. So this is probably something that people struggle with the most because in all breakups, pretty much, there's a loss of attraction. That's pretty much the reason why each and every one of us go through breakups because something that occurred caused our partner to become unattracted to us. Bottom line, I'm not just talking about physical appearance. I'm talking about whatever it is in your personality, in the way that you interact with your partner, in the way that your lifestyle has been unfolding, whatever the case may be, you have become unattractive. <sighs> Nobody wants to be unattractive. We all strive to be, or we should be striving to be the most attractive and the best version of ourselves. So going through the other stages that I've given you, you should be able to come out on the other side, feeling more confident, feeling like you can tackle this relationship. If you want that to be uh, a relationship you have again with your ex, it should be a way for you to feel as if you can do this. You can put it back together. You can start fresh, but there's the component of reattraction because no matter what you do, no actions, there's no trick, there's no magic formula that's going to get your ex back. They literally have to be attracted to you again. And people make the mistake of forgetting what it was in the beginning that probably attracted their ex to them. We lose ourselves in relationships all the time. We don't realize we are, but it sort of happens gradually. And this is what it looks like in most relationships. Two people come together. Those two people had lives of their own. So let's say this partner used to play basketball all the time. And this partner used to do yoga and had friends that would get together and go to classes. And this was part of their life and their daily routine. And this was part of their life and their daily routine. And then all of a sudden these two people come together and now they're spending a lot of time together. So they're like this, they're attached to each other's hip. They are happy and yoga falls by the wayside and basketball with friends falls by the wayside and interacting with anyone else except for each other falls by the wayside. Everything else is put on the back burner and it seems like that's the right thing to do. And it's not. It's one of the first ways you and your partner become unattracted to each other. And it seems so counterintuitive because if you're spending more time with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, why in the world would you all of a sudden be in the position where they are unattracted to you? Well, it's because you lose yourself. You lose your mojo, so to speak. You forget what it's like to court and to chase your significant other. You forget what it's like to feel wanted because if you're always with someone, it tends to be the case where people stop dating their significant other. They stop treating them as if they're someone who they want to be with. They just start acting as if it's a given. Like this person's in my life. I really don't have to put the effort in. I don't have to take him out on dates. I don't have to take her out on dates. I don't have to put the effort in giving them love letters or texting them cute things or flirting with them anymore. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. Sorry, I had to go close my window. I felt like the light was blinding me. So it's the biggest mistake you can make to stop acting like you did when you didn't have that person as a given. So you guys know all the mistakes you've made. And if you haven't, you need to go back to the other steps and you need to really see what it is that caused your relationship to get to this point. Because something in there made your ex not attracted to you anymore. Attraction, it's intangible. It's not something we can actually pinpoint. If you think about your ex, you cannot explain to someone what makes you love them. And that's why it's so crucial to understand how attraction really works and how reattraction works. So some of the things you can do, because I want to give you an action plan. I want to give you steps to reattract your ex or to attract new people. It's the same. But for me, there are things that seriously worked for me 
and I know they sound silly and you've probably read them in other books, but I want to give you like real explanations on how this works and real advice and ideas. And it's hard because if you're not somehow around your ex anymore, it's going to be very hard for them to see the new you and all the work you've been putting in. So after you go through the 30 days, if you're doing no contact, there has to be a point in time where you start to reach out to your ex. And I feel like I need to do an entire video on what that looks like. I was trying to put together an ebook for you guys. It's still in the works. I'm so sorry. I have so many jobs to do and it's very hard to put something together cohesively. That's, that's easy for you to understand. I'm working also on something that is going to be available on my website and it's going to be one step lower than one-on-one -on -one sessions. And it's going to be very, very inexpensive and it's going to walk you through questions and give you my sort of pre-written advice on your specific situation. Sort of like, how do you say that? Like, a um, sort of like a quiz. And in the end of the quiz, it's going to give you what I think your first step should be. So that's coming. It's just all in due time. I have a lot of things going on. Some of the ways in which you can start to reach out to your ex again, if the 30 days have passed, you guys haven't really spoken, you should be doing things on social media if you guys have each other on social media. And those things are so crucial because social proof in this day and age is so important. So them seeing you as an attractive person starts with you exhibiting characteristics that equal attraction. So some of the reasons why your ex probably thinks you are not attractive is because a lot of times when we're sad, we show it. It's written on our faces. It's written on our Facebook posts. It's written on our Twitter posts. It's written on our pictures and you guys need to stop that shit. It's not attractive. Nobody wants to be around someone sad. So snap the fuck out of it and start acting like a human again. Because if two people were standing in front of you, I don't know, at a bar or something, and one guy was like, And the other one was like, like, who would you want? I mean, maybe you don't like that person, but I'm just saying if one was happy and one was sad and downcast, who would you choose to be around? I mean, if you're miserable right now, you might want to look at the sad person and say like, misery loves company. But let's be honest. If you're looking for a partner, you're going to be looking for someone happy and fun to be around who can add to your life. So you need to start exhibiting that. You need to start to post positive things about your life. If you've been putting really sad quotes about life on all your fucking social media, stop. It looks so dumb. It's not attractive. You know, there's a time and a place for that, but yeah, it's, you want to be anonymous on Tumblr. That's one thing, but to put it out there as what you're feeling, cause that's what it is. People are not stupid. If you put a quote up like that, it's really you saying it. So saying like you're super sad and like you're starting over and all that stuff is just, it's not the road to attraction. Okay. So cut it out. And instead you're going to start to want to fill your feed with stuff that exhibits attraction. So maybe some uplifting quotes, maybe some ambitious quotes, some success quotes, some quotes about, you know, loving life and appreciating what you have and being grateful if you're into quotes. But what's more important than that stuff is pictures of you exhibiting happiness and selfies. They're not my favorite because selfies are so contrived and they're so, and they're like acting selfies are just not real. And what's real is socializing. What's attractive is knowing that a person has friends, hobbies, goals, ambitions, a career, education. These things are attractive. And what's interesting is like, we don't consciously realize that we're being attracted to these things, but as we're scrolling through a feed, and we see someone and maybe their book is out and they're highlighting and they show their coffee and them reading and them studying for an exam. 
in the back of our minds, it's attractive. You're intrigued. That person's sitting at home instead of going out and drinking tonight because they're focused on their career and their future and they're ambitious and, and they're going to be successful and you know that. And that's attractive. It's a very, very small thing that we don't even notice is attractive, but it is. Another thing is having hobbies, seeing someone rock climbing, seeing someone surfing, seeing someone playing a sport, seeing that they can have a team environment and be a part of that. Volleyball, doing charity with friends, having friends. And if you don't have these things because you've let them go in your relationship, then you need to rekindle those relationships with your friends. You need to reestablish a life outside of the one you had with your ex. That is the number one thing you need to focus on. Instead of focusing on how to get your ex back, get your ex back by doing the things that cause them to be attracted to you. They are probably thinking to themselves, this person has no life. I was the only thing making them happy. They didn't have any goals. They didn't have any ambition. They lost themselves. They let themselves get fat. They stopped hanging out with their friends. You've got to have a life. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming back and watching another one of my videos. I have my new microphone on for the first time in one of my vlogs here, so you won't have to worry about the audio being too shitty. Instead of doing what I normally do and talking about a chapter in the book, I realize that going through chapters every week just doesn't work. So I'm gonna find a new method to do that. I'm probably just gonna tell you guys about books I've read and just recommend them and leave the links below because going through a book like that, I don't have a lot of time to go through it all at once. So it didn't really work for me. So I apologize if that was really hard to follow. I hope you guys did read. It's called A Breakup Because It's Broken. I think it's a great starter book when you are going through a breakup. The other books I read, are going to be more in depth. They're going to be more about getting to know yourself. They're going to be more about helping you heal and becoming a better person.